What's going on guys? Welcome back to Dennis Simplifies. In today's video, we are going to go through the Newton's Divided Difference Formula in numerical methods. So sit back, relax, and as you already know, let's simplify. Alright, so we are given a table over here and we're supposed to find a particular f of x value when given an x value using the Newton's divided difference formula. Alright, so what is this whole Newton's divided difference formula? To give a scenario, let's say today I buy you two oranges, alright? The following day I buy you another two oranges and I am consistent. Every day I am buying you two oranges from, let's say, today. On the fifth day, you are going to know that Dennis is going to buy me this number of oranges because you know that every day I buy you two oranges. Now if you look over here, you can see that the interval between these x values are not equal, they are not consistent. So you can see that on the first day, Dennis bought you five oranges. On the second day, he bought you nine oranges. On the fifth day, he bought you 1033, what, what is that? 1335 oranges. So you can see that there is no consistency here. So you can't actually tell the number of oranges. But now, what we want to do using the Newton divided difference formula is that we want to generate a formula like this, right? And if I put in the day that Dennis wants to buy me the orange, if I put in the day here, I'm, I'm supposed to know the number of oranges I'm going to get on that particular day, right? So the thing is that with this formula, if I put in any particular x value, I'm supposed to know the number of oranges. So whenever you're given a table like this, all you're supposed to do is that generate a formula that even though the x values are not equal, the intervals between them are not equal, if I put in any x value, it's supposed to give me or tell me the number of oranges I'm going to get by that particular day. So if I put in zero here, I'm supposed to get five oranges. So this supposed to, you are supposed to generate a formula like this. So let's get to let's get to the point. So with this, in order to generate a formula like this, we are seeing we should use the Newton's divided difference formula. So this is how the Newton's divided difference formula looks like. Well, for now, it looks a little bit nasty, but then as you go along, it gets clearer. I will encourage you not to memorize it, because along the way, you, you get to understand it, right? So now let's continue. So let's define our variables here. You can see we have x0 here, x1, some x2 values here. So these are actually values from our table. So we have x0, x1, x2, x3, x4. We also have F0, F1, F2, F3, and F4. So because our interval is ending at 4, or our node, our x value is at 4, we are going to be using P4 of x, right? Alright, so now let's cut to T's. So with the Newton's divided difference formula, this is how the table looks like. You remember from the previous video, I encourage you that we always try our best to draw the table. So this is a table for the Newton's divided difference formula. So this, from this table, you can go ahead and then define what this f a bracket with the x0, x1 is. So this is what the Newton's divided difference actually means. So you can see that we are dividing the difference between the f values and then the x values. So we have the difference between the f values divided by the difference between the x values. So that's why we have the divided difference, okay? So that's where the name actually comes from, divided difference, all right? So you can see this, you'll be using this formula within this table to find for all these values you see over here. And at the last part, we are going to go through a short exercise that can actually help you find your answers without actually memorizing any table or any, any formula in here. So let's get, let's get to it. So over here, we are going to redraw the table here as I told you, right? And then we know what our x0 is, x1, x2, x3, and then x4 values from here, right? And here is our f of x value. So we know this is f naught, 
F1, F2, F3, and then F4. So the first thing we are supposed to do is to find the first divided difference, which is F of X not X1. Okay, and we know the formula from here. So using this formula, we can know that we are going to be taking the f of x1 value first minus this one on top so we're going to have 33 minus so the one below minus the one on top so 33 minus 1245 divided by negative 1 minus negative 4 okay that was going to give us our first difference so we're going to have that over here all right then the next thing is that we take the one down here 5 minus 33 divided by 0 minus negative 1 okay and then we have our first one again as we come here we take the 9 minus the 5 divided by the 2 minus 0 then we get another one here all right and the last one with 1 3 3 5 minus 9 divided by 5 minus 2 then we get another value here so always make sure that you write these values in the line between them you can see we have it between them because so that you know that you're actually dealing with these two values and the result is the value here so put the value kind of between them here right between them so you can see this value is also between right this one is also between them here and this value here is also between them here okay now the next one is to do the second difference the second difference now for the second difference we are going to take the value down here negative 28 minus negative 404 divided by now you come down here so you can trace it here you trace it to the 5 right so what is the x value for the 5 that is 0 so you are taking negative 28 minus minus 404 divided by 0 minus negative 4 so this 4 will trace back to this value here negative 4 okay so this one traces to the 0 and this one traces to the 4x okay so we're going to have our x value here i will do the same thing 2 and then negative 28 so 2 minus minus 28 then we're going to have this one tracing down here to 2 minus negative 1 it's a negative 1 traces here right so 2 minus minus 28 divided by 2 minus minus 1 so we have that over here so that is 10 so make sure you put the values in between them okay put it in between so that you'll be able to trace it put the value in between the 10 also put it in between these two okay on the line in between and the last one is 442 minus 2 divided by 5 minus 0 okay so you can it traces back here minus 0 all right so then the last one we take n minus 94 divided by now you trace it down here to 2 minus negative 4 all right so 2 minus negative 4 becomes 2 plus 4 you trace it you trace it back here to negative 4 and then this one the 10 you trace it back to the 2 okay and the last one is 88 minus 10 divided by 5 minus 0 sorry 5 minus 3 minus minus 1 okay so this 10 here you trace it to negative 1 so you trace it to negative 1 and this 88 you trace it to 5 so 88 minus 10 divided by 5 minus 1 so 5 minus minus 1 which becomes 5 plus 1 okay we do that and then we get 18 now the last one we have to do is for the fourth divided difference now for that one too 13 minus minus 14 then you trace this one all the way back this one will be a negative 4 and then you trace the 13 all the way back to 5 so you get 13 minus minus 14 divided by 5 minus minus 4 okay then we have it over here so 5 minus minus 4 is the same as 5 plus 4 then we get 3 so now we can actually end over here because you know that our node was at x4 so we can actually end over here now with these values we can actually find we can derive the formula we we're talking about using the newton divided difference formula so what is the newton divided difference formula we have it over here 
So it's very nasty here, but as we start inputting the values, it becomes very clear. Now what is f x naught? F x naught is this value over here, which is one two four five. We said we talked about that over here in our table, right? So that would be this value. Then x, we know the value of x. No, we don't. We don't yet know the value of x. Do we know the value of x naught? Yes, we do. X naught is negative four, or from the table here, negative four, right? Do we know the first difference of this x naught and then x one? Yes, we do. That is negative four zero four, right? Then we do this one again. Then we find for this one x naught x one x two. That is what ninety four. Okay. Then again we come to this one x naught x one x two x three. That is going to be negative fourteen. Then the last one x naught x one x two x three x four. That is going to be three. So we are taking it this way from this from this way. Okay, you're taking it from the top here. So let me see if I can change. If I can draw a line in there so that you can see it. So we are taking it from the top this way. You see, we are taking it from the top that way. So we take the values on top here. We first took this value, which was the F, F naught, right? For this value here. For this value here. Then we continue with it. Then after that, we came to take for this f x not x one to be negative four zero four. Then we come here to come and take the f x not x one x two for the second difference. So the first difference was this one up to x one, and the second difference is up to x two. Okay, so that's ninety four. Then the third difference is up to x three. That's the third difference, which is negative fourteen. Then the fourth difference is up to x four. Which is what three. So you pick these values here, and then we we'll substitute them into our, our Newton's divided difference formula, and then we we'll finally we'll be able to generate our, our formula that can compute for the values of f of f of x. So let's let's move to that side. So in here, so in here, we are going to continue. So as I said, we we'll substitute the values in there. That is one, two, four, five. We, we, they were looking for the value of x, right? So we do this, then when we simplify it, right, we can further simplify this, and then we are going to get this one. Just as we did with simplification in the previous video, you go about it the same way, and you finally get this as your final formula. So this is the formula that we are actually looking for. So within this formula, if I put in any value of x into this formula, I'm supposed to get its corresponding f of x value. Okay. So you can see from the table, if you can see it properly, if I put in, let's say, negative 4 into this formula, I'm supposed to get the corresponding f of x value on the table, which is 1, 2, 4, 5, right? If I put it inside, I'm supposed to get the value. And if I find, if I want to find any x value that is not on the table also, if I put that x value inside this formula, I'm supposed to get the corresponding f of x value, right? So that's actually how it goes. So you can see that, it's all about generating a formula using someone's formula so that you'll be able to find something that you are looking for. Alright, so we said that because you already knew that I'll be buying you oranges every day, you can you can actually estimate that by the fifth day like I'll buy you how many you, you can estimate that by the fifth day I'll buy you 10 oranges. But then when the when the interval is not equal, you find that you have difficulties determining when or the number of oranges I'll be buying you at that particular day or at a certain day. So with this formulas, you're able to, or with this method, you're able to find a formula that anytime you put in a particular day or you put in a particular x value, you can find its corresponding f of x value. All right, friends. So I've been talking a lot. Let's take our final slide. So over here, as I was saying before, this 14, you trace it back to get. So how do we get this 14? It's 31 minus 3 divided by 3 minus 1 so you trace it back you trace it okay the same thing if i pick a random value like let's say this 12 so this 12 how am i going to get this 12 it's going to be 62 minus 38 then i'm going to trace them back when i trace them okay when i trace it back to the 3 and then when i come back and i trace 62 i trace it back to the 5 so it's going to be 5 and then this 3 
so you always can just pick any value and then trace it but so the system is going to be 62 and then 110 when i trace it i'm going to get 7 and then when i trade the 62 i'm going to get 4 okay so you can always pick any value and then trace them back or if i if i take this one over here i can trace the one to 16 and then what 12 and if i trace them back i'm going to get 7 and if i trace this 12 back i'm going to get 3 over here all right so that's how the divided difference actually works if you know how to trace them you won't have to bother about worrying or worrying yourself about memorizing formulas or anything so that's something small on the newton's divided difference formula if you have any questions be sure to leave them in the comment section don't forget to like and show some love by subscribing until next time I've had yeah.